Well, to tell us a little more about why that mission was so exciting for scientists, I'm joined now by Professor Daniel Brown. He's a professor of astronomy at Nottingham Trent University in the United Kingdom. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us on the programme today. You're welcome. Interesting times indeed. <laughs> in, indeed. So just tell us, first of all, then your reaction when you heard this capsule had successfully made it back to planet Earth. I was exceedingly excited. There was some nail biting seconds just beforehand, uh, but it's uh, really fascinating to see this actually softly landing and sitting there really pristinely upright in the soft Utah soil. So it's a uh, uh, another little bit of a waiting period to see uh, what it actually fully houses. And then uh, the scientific community is harnessing all their uh, equipment to explore what these samples actually hold. So really exciting indeed. And just on the touchdown itself, we heard earlier that scientists actually cried tears of joy when they heard it had made it back to planet Earth, back to the state of Utah in the US. Was that because it was particularly difficult to get it back to Earth? Why was that moment so important? I think it's because it's the culmination of all the work. It's because everything was... Uh, challenging and uh, was difficult and it was a long chain of things that were happening from flying there to actually mapping um, the target, finding a safe place, gathering samples, being able to bring them back and then actually it all comes down to the last few minutes where the landing actually happened. So it's a really, really focused moment of this task and uh, a little bit nail biting because in the images we couldn't see the uh, uh, first drogue shoot uh, deploying properly. It must have, but uh, that was one nail biting thing. And I think the scientists you're referring to, uh, one of them was in the uh, 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 in the choppers flying towards pickup and uh, they were only fed a little bit of information where we on the other side um, here following it in the UK, we could see mm -hmm. the uh, live stream coming in a bit clearer and uh, we saw a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it must have been very nail biting. And that's a release to sort of hear that parachutes were deployed and a soft landing set. And they couldn't have imagined anything better for the landing. All right. Well, let's talk a bit then about what we may learn from what is on board that capsule. These asteroid rocks are older than planet Earth itself. So what do you think we might learn? Might we learn about our planet or might we learn more broadly about how the solar system itself was actually formed? I think the interesting bit is, as you said, it's uh, uh, older than planet Earth and it's sort of mimicking the kind of material, these carbon rich asteroids out of which um, the sun solar system was formed as well. So it's really giving us that early composition. And what we're hoping is that uh, we are going to be able to analyze these very rich, complex carbon molecules that we're seeing. Previous samples uh, that the Japanese uh, collected from Ruiku um, thousands of uh, complex molecules. And this one we're expecting will mimic the same, if not even more, because we've got so much more material to explore. And it's really fascinating to see because the orbit of this object of Bennu is quite close to Earth's orbit. So we could hypothesize that it's very similar kind of material that then rained back on the early Earth. So knowing more about this asteroid helps us to actually see what could have rained down on the early um, Earth and on Earth while it was forming to shape life as we know it. Really interesting. Indeed. And Ben, are you talking about the asteroid that these samples came from has been described as well as the most dangerous rock in the solar system. Can you explain to us why it's so dangerous? Um, it is on a very similar orbit as Earth. So there's uh, opportunities where these orbits will cross. There's a very, 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 very low probability of that occurring, but it still makes it a hazardous object. And uh, that's why this mission is also so interesting, because it helps us to now um, get, for example, an idea of the thermal properties of uh, the material out of which this um, asteroid is made. And uh, you not only need gravity and a bit of understanding of relativity to produ uh, produce really high precision orbits, you also need to know a little bit more about the thermal properties, as some of the exploration from Bennu has really nicely shown. And that's why these samples and the thermal properties will help us to keep track of this path and map this possible hazardous object in the future. And knowing more about something that might in many generations uh, pose a threat for Earth is something actually which can help us to fix this problem. 
it may be many generations away, but I'm sure it's something people would like to understand a little bit more about. You're saying there is a chance, a slim chance, that Bennu could hit planet Earth. Is that, what, hundreds of years' time? What's the calculation for the moment? I think we're talking about uh, um, a time frame where the precision of the orbit that we're having isn't holding properly. So at that point, I would have to refer back to the updated calculations that will happen as soon as we're learning more from the thermal properties of this as well. But probably if you're looking at probabilities, you're looking at something, throw a coin and get head, throw a coin again and get head again. Try to do that so that you'll get heads 11 times in a row. That's the kind of probability we're talking about. So these are very, very, very low probabilities. But still, we're looking at these as is called hazardous objects. And they've got their opportunities because Given the orbit in which it is, it is such a superb target to uh, travel to as well because uh, the orbital properties are so close to the Earth. Well, and that's why Osiris Rex is actually changing targets and swinging past and is heading off now to um, Apophis, another asteroid to explore. So the legacy of this project is ongoing. Absolutely. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Professor Daniel Brown talking to us there from Nottingham Trent University in the United Kingdom.